Good morning, boys and girls. I hope you're all feeling nice and fresh after a lovely weekend. Uh, this is the, your English video, um, just a short one for you today, but you will find um, some work attached into your portfolios that you can continue with after you've listened to this. So our LC today is, can I find the meaning of unfamiliar words in a poem? And we always do this when we look at a new text, don't we? we try and find out the meaning of any words that we don't understand. That's what unfamiliar means. So there are quite a few in this new poem that I'm going to show you. Now this poem is broken into two parts, one for today and one for tomorrow. So the poem we're going to look at is by an author called Sarah Coleridge and it's called The Garden Year, keeping our theme on gardens and seasons. And the poem takes us through each month of the year and today we're going to look at the first half of the poem from January to June. So you can guess tomorrow we'll be looking from July until December. Now this is the first half of the poem. Let me read it to you first. The garden year. January brings the snow, makes our feet and fingers glow. February brings the rain, thaws the frozen lake again. March brings breezes loud and shrill stirs the dancing daffodil. April brings the primrose sweet, scatters daisies at our feet. May brings flocks of pretty lambs, skipping by their fleecy dams. June brings tulips, lilies, roses, fills the children's hands with posies. Now there are a few words in there, a little bit tricky to understand, but we'll come back to those in a second. We're just going to have a bit of a recap to start with. Um, I'm going to give you a few seconds to have a look at this poem and see if you can spot any of the rhyming words. Now, where do you normally find the rhyming words in a poem? If I look at the first two lines again, January brings the snow, makes our feet and fingers glow. So the two words that have the same sound at the end. I wonder if you can find any more in the poem. And also, can you find any nouns? This is our recap from last week. Nouns are naming words, names of things, names of places. Can you spot any verbs in there? Doing words. And what about any adjectives? Any words that have been used to describe a noun? I'll give you a few seconds before we move on to the next part. Now you can pause and come back to that any time if you just fancy having a look at the poem. But there are a few words in there that are a little bit tricky, a little bit unfamiliar. So this is what I want you to do today. For some of you, you might be able to work out what the tricky words mean by um, just reading the sentence. March brings breezes loud and shrill. So if it's describing breezes or the wind, what is it trying to say about the wind? Okay, maybe you can tell from that sentence how it's describing the wind. But if you can't, come to this part here, you might need to refer to a dictionary. Now, if you, not everyone has a dictionary in the house. I don't think I have at the moment. Um, but don't worry about that. There are lots and lots of online dictionaries. There are children's dictionaries, adult dictionaries. Just go into a simple Google search and search for uh, a dictionary and you'll find lots of examples in there. So what I want you to do is have a look in your portfolios and you will see your attached sheet. And I've identified seven or eight words from that first part of the poem that I would like you to try and find the meaning of or the definition of. OK, now, as you could probably guess, for tomorrow, we're going to be looking at the second half of the poem and doing the same kind of thing, because there are some tricky words in there as well. So this is Monday and Tuesday's main English task for you is to find the definition of some of the tricky words in this poem. Good luck. <laughs> 